Hello, my fellow James Bond 007 fans. This is Alan. The tribute video for the late, great Sir Roger Moore, the third James Bond. Uh, we received the very sad news today that Roger passed away at the age of 89 uh, from cancer. Uh, Roger Moore, of course, the longest serving of all the James Bonds. He played the role for 12 years uh, from 1973 to 1985. And he made seven movies as James Bond. And to this day, he still holds the record as the longest serving of all the James Bonds. Um, we had never lost a James Bond before now. Uh, in the world of Doctor Who, there are actually four doctors out of, out of 13 who are sadly no longer with us. Uh, the first three, William Hartnell, Patrick Trout, and John Pertwee. And recently, uh, we lost uh, John Hurt who played the War Doctor, but we had never, ever lost a James Bond until now. And uh, Roger Moore is now officially the first of the 007s uh, to leave us. Um, I owe a great debt to Roger Moore. Uh, Roger Moore was my very first James Bond. Uh, Moonraker was my very first James Bond movie. Uh, I saw it when I was only 10 years old, and I was a James Bond fan ever since. And even though since then, you know, Sean Connery has become my favorite James Bond, I still owe a great debt uh, to Sir Roger. Um, and even though Roger Moore's era, in my opinion, was not perfect, uh, I'm just being perfectly honest that uh, Live and Let Die, his debut Bond film, even though I know Live and Let Die definitely has its share of fans, you know, I was never too big on Live and Let Die, and I'm really not too big... <laughs> at all, I'm sorry to say, on Roger Moore's final Bond movie, uh, A View to a Kill. Jack, I'm sorry. Ollie, I'm sorry if you guys are watching. Um, you know, but, 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 I'm giving Roger Moore his credit where credit is due that I think his middle five Bond movies, uh, The Man with the Golden Gun, The Spy Who Loved Me, Moonraker, For Your Eyes Only, and Octopussy are all very good very entertaining James Bond movies that range from good to great. Um, and Roger Moore gave fine performances uh, in all five of those Bond movies. Although, he, the funny thing about The Spy Who Loved Me, I like The Spy Who Loved Me. Many people say The Spy Who Loved Me is Roger's best Bond film. It's a lot of fun. And even Roger Moore himself named The Spy Who Loved Me as his personal favorite. Although I thought his performance in that one was a little bit more uh, reserved so to speak, but I thought Roger Moore was fantastic in The Man with the Golden Gun. Anybody who has ever criticized Roger Moore's Bond as being too jokey and uh, lighthearted, uh, and by the way, being a lighthearted Bond is not a bad thing, it just means that, you know, he, he played the role with the most humor, okay? But anybody who criticizes uh, Roger Moore's Bond as not being tough enough, you've got to watch him in The Man with the Golden Gun. I stand my ground that The Man with the Golden Gun features Roger Moore's very best performance as 007, because he got tough in that movie. He, he didn't suffer fools gladly in The Man with the Golden Gun, and that was the movie, uh, in my opinion, where Roger Moore became James Bond for me. Um, wasn't too crazy about his first performance in Live and Let Die, and he was following hot on the heels of Sean Connery. Huge, huge, huge pair of shoes to fill. But I really think that by the time Roger Moore got to his second Bond movie, The Man with the Golden Gun, he was more comfortable. He was more um, relaxed in the role, if you like. And, and he got a much better handle on the role. And he delivered a knockout performance as 007. And from The Man with the Golden Gun, Man with the Golden Gun onwards, Roger Moore was, was James Bond for me. And he was a wonderful James Bond. Uh, overall, and um, what I loved about Roger Moore was uh, his, you know, he, he was the most humorous of, of all the Bonds, but, you know, he was still, he could still get tough when he needed to get stuff, uh, get tough like in The Man with the Golden Gun, but also moments of, of uh, toughness in, in all of his Bond movies. Um, he wore the suit great, he looked great, and uh, as the producers of the James Bond movie series are only too happy to tell you, Roger was great with a quip. Man, was Roger great with a quip. <laughs> he was great with one-liners, rattling them off with great aplomb. And um, the majority of his Bond films, I think, are just great, great fun. I mean, they're, they're probably the most, you know, popcorn-munching 
of all uh, the Bond movies. Uh, but nonetheless, they are terrific fun. Um, I will even admit, with no shame whatsoever, that my favorite Roger Moore Bond movie is Moonraker, a Bond film that many Bond fans do not like because they say it's just too silly. Um, I say Moonraker is a silly Bond movie in a good way. It's a great, silly Bond movie. And I'm also of the opinion that, you know, Moonraker is a Bond film that only could have worked for Roger Moore and none of the other Bonds. If you put Sean Connery in Moonraker or Daniel Craig in Moonraker or any of the others in Moonraker, it would have been a disaster. But Moonraker fit Roger Moore like a glove. And, um, and again, Moonraker was my very first Bond movie besides, so I'm always going to have nostalgic affection uh, for Moonraker. But, but Roger was a terrific Bond, all things considered, and, and he seemed to be the, uh, the, the, the most fun <laughs> of all the 007s, um, all things considered. Um, let's not forget, of course, uh, his work as Simon Templer in The Saint, uh, I admit I never saw the TV show The Saint. I'm sorry, but that show was simply before my time, and I just never got around to uh, to uh, purchasing it on DVD. Perhaps I should, because I know that that's uh, Roger's second most famous role, second only to James Bond. Um, and, you know, he, he had a long, illustrious film career um, going back into, what, I think the 1950s at, at the earliest. Um could be 40s, but uh, I would say 1950s for sure. Um, and uh, let's also never, ever forget his wonderful work as a humanitarian uh, for, uh, for UNICEF. And um, he was just a great man. I mean, I never met him. I never knew him personally. I would have liked to. But there's no doubt that he was, he was quite the gentleman, Roger Moore. A great gentleman, a great man, and a great, fun James Bond 007. Um, there's one last bit of Roger Moore that I'd like to share with you guys. Um, Roger Moore, uh, five years ago, when James Bond was celebrating its 50th anniversary, and Roger Moore had just released his, uh, his book about his time as James Bond, and I, and I, actually, I think he, he spends the book reviewing all of the James Bond movies and giving you his personal opinion on, on each one, um, at least up through Quantum of Solace, um, you know, and Skyfall had just been released into movie theaters, of course, with Daniel Craig. Roger Moore actually stopped by the uh, the radio studios of Howard Stern. That's right, shock jock Howard Stern. And regardless of what you may think of Howard Stern, whether you like Howard Stern or you don't like Howard Stern, I think that the interview that, that Howard Stern did with Sir Roger was a wonderful interview. It shouldn't be all that surprising that Howard did ask Roger a few salty questions like, uh, so, uh, Roger, how many women have you slept with in your life? <laughs> Something like that. But luckily for Howard, Sir Roger took it all in stride and was a gentleman. And say what you want about Howard Stern, but there's no getting around the, the fact, and I got to give Howard his credit where credit is due, that he showed uh, Roger the utmost respect. I want to share with you one little little piece of the interview that Howard Stern did with Roger Moore, and this is towards the very end of the interview, when Howard Stern asked Roger a question, something along the lines of, you know, what what is the most elegant funeral, the Hollywood funeral, you've ever attended? Hmm, interesting question, don't you think? And uh, anyway, for whatever reason, you know, Howard asked him, yes, yeah, so, so what's the most elaborate Hollywood funeral you've ever been to? And uh, Roger replied that uh, it was for his friend, the late great actress Audrey Hepburn. And by the way, it was Audrey Hepburn who got Roger Moore involved with UNICEF because Audrey was very involved with UNICEF herself. And uh, Roger then went on to, to tell Howard that um, you know he got to stand up before the, the crowd that were there at Audrey Hepburn's funeral, you know, her friends and family. And uh, he spoke at Audrey Hepburn's funeral and he repeated uh, some of the words that he spoke at Audrey Hepburn's funeral. And I think that some of these wonderful words that, that Roger spoke at, at Audrey Hepburn's funeral, you can also apply them now to Sir Roger himself, who I hope now is having a most wonderful reunion up there in heaven with, uh, with Audrey. But anyway, here's that little piece of Howard Stern's interview with the late, great Sir Roger Moore. What's the best funeral you ever went to? Like oh, we're yeah. all well, There's no such thing as a, a good, good funeral. funeral. Oh, yes, yeah. there is. When everyone is A-list, it's, it's like heaven. 
<laughs> I mean, you get some schmooze with everyone. Oh, There's some good okay. funerals. You know, I mean, where you see you run into this one and that one, you know, it's fantastic. Whose who's funeral was the biggest, the best funeral? Well, the biggest and the saddest was Audrey Hepburn's. Uh, wow. Oh, yeah, she was UNICEF too, right? Yeah. She brought me into the organization. <laughs> did you ever get to do a eulogy at that one? No, her son did. Uh, they should add, yeah. Sean, and which, uh, may I repeat it? What he said? What did he say? Well, you see, I knew, knew that Audrey was my inspiration in coming into UNICEF. But I never had a chance to ask her what had been her inspiration and sean said at the, in his eulogy sean ferrell this is he said that his mother three weeks before had been christmas eve and she asked he and his brother luca and her companion bob walters to come and sit by her bed she wanted to read them something she said sam levinson was a teacher and when his first granddaughter was born he wrote her a letter he said for lovely lips speak only words of kindness for lovely eyes seek out the good in people for a slim figure share your food with the hungry for a lustrous hair let a child run its fingers through it once a day and for poise, walk with the knowledge that you will never walk alone. We leave you a tradition with a future that the loving, tender care of human beings will never become obsolete. That people, like things, have to be restored, revived, redeemed, reclaimed, and redeemed, and redeemed. Never throw out anybody. And if you ever need a helping hand, you'll find you have one at the end of your arm. And as you grow older, you'll find you have two hands. One for helping yourself, the other for helping others. Your good old days are ahead of you. Have many of them. Look at you. Wow. That was beautiful. Oh, mm -hmm. They should have had you do that. No way that kid was as good as you doing that. <laughs> Pales in comparison. Uh, yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. That no, was really beautiful. Wonderful words, eh? Wonderful, wonderful words. And, um, Sir Roger, we're going to miss you. Sir Roger Moore, thank you so very much for being my first James Bond, for introducing me to the world of James Bond, for being a wonderful James Bond, for being a wonderful actor. Because I know you did more than just James Bond. You did more than just Bond and Simon Templar. Um, thank you for being uh, a wonderful humanitarian, for your great work with UNICEF, for being a great gentleman and a great man. And we are going to miss you so very much. God bless you, Roger Moore. Thank you. Farewell. <laughs>